How's it going guys? We have a past level question for Microfarm for step one as well as family medicine, internal medicine for TCK. This is very bread and butter, ultra fucking easy, shows up all over the NBME content, okay? Some of you seeing this clip, yes, you'll know the answer instantly, but this isn't about being dramatic. This is about just yieldness here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below, and I'll start the clip. So 24-year-old man living in Florida, four days to have a regular pigmentation, back and shoulders. A photograph is shown, and it appears that we have mixed hypo hyperpigment. Patient. Question wants to know the most appropriate pharmacologic treatment. So let's just go backwards. Selenium is the correct answer. Okay, so topical selenium is the treatment for malassezia furfur. This is tinea versicolor. That's what the condition is called, tinea versicolor, and it's caused by a fungus called malassezia furfur. We treat with topical selenium, ultra fucking bread and butter and high yield, as I just said. Okay, so for whatever reason, the malassezia furfur is able to break down fatty acids in the skin, and that can cause this hypopigmentation, okay? So topical selenium is what they want. Topical selenium or selenium shampoo, Selsin Blue, is also the answer for seborrheic dermatitis, not seborrheic keratosis, seborrheic dermatitis, which is also malassezia species, which will be fungal infection in the hairline, okay, often weeping papules or scaling hairline. That's different from tinea capitis, okay? So if we have seborrheic dermatitis, we treat with selenium shampoo or ketoconazole shampoo. But if we have tinea capitis, which would be a circular area of scaling alopecia, we treat that with oral griseofulvin, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly whip through the highest yield points, cutting to the fucking chase here. Uh, prednisone, never given topically. Pred prednisone is an oral corticosteroid, okay? Myriad of uses, autoimmune diseases, no relation to this question. Permethrin uh, is going to be the topical treatment for scabies as well as lice, okay? So scabies, linear burrows, very buzzy phrase. They're going to tell you a 44-year-old male was living in a homeless shelter for a few months and he has itchy hands. They're going to show you a picture of the hands where there's red dots all over the place. They're supposed to be linear burrows. They don't look like it, but that's what they're supposed to be. And they're going to say topical antifungals weren't effective. What's the next best step in management? Steroids, topical steroids is wrong. The correct answer is permethrin. Okay, that's how they ask scabies. Lindane is also a treatment for scabies and lice, but it's more toxic and it's never assessed. Okay, that's all you need to know about lindane is that it could theoretically be used, but it's not because it's more toxic. We like topical permethrin for scabies and lice. Lice is also known as pediculosis. That's actually the medical term. Pediculosis capitis, head lice. Pediculosis corporis, body lice. We use topical permethrin, okay? Now, mupirocin, ultra fucking high yield for peds and family medicine for 2CK. This is a peculiar agent because pretty much non-existent yieldness on step one, interestingly, okay? But all over the place on 2CK. So topical mupirocin is used for impetigo. Okay, so impetigo being a school source, staph aureus, or group A strep, strep pyogenes, they like topical mupirocin for that, all right? So know this drug, and topical griseofulvin, as I mentioned before, this is going to be the oral treatment for tinea capitis, okay? Can we use second line for other things, okay, like onychomycosis, which is a nail infection with fungi, all right? Um, first sign for onychomycosis is oral terbinafin, okay? But chryseofulvin, you also should be aware, is a microtubule inhibitor. Clindamycin, wrong answer. So the highest yield thing for you is similarly you need to know, apart from the fact that it's a 50S ribosomal subinhibitor, so protein synthesis inhibitor, is that it's used for pulmonary abscess, okay? So anaerobes above the diaphragm, all right? So uh, metronidazole anaerobes below the diaphragm. So your short point of consolidation for this past level clip is just you need to know the spot diagnosis is tinea versa color. This is malassezia furfur, and we treat this with topical selenium. You know the deal. I'm to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.